welcome to the final session of Who is My Neighbor? Building God's Neighborhood. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you for the incredible community you have made among us. Thank you for our families, our friends, and all our neighbors from near and far. Guide us as we come together once more to learn in the hope that we can build loving relationships with those around us. Amen. Hello again and welcome back to Who Is My Neighbor, VBS. It's hard to believe that this is our last session together. I wonder, I wonder what Miss Amber will have to share with us today. Hey, here she comes now and who's that coming with her? Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi everybody. Good to see you again. I've been thinking a lot about the story that we've been hearing. How the man was beaten up and left in need. Two people walked by, but a Samaritan was a good neighbor to the man. And how neighbors can be different from us, even if, even people we don't know, and still be our neighbors because we all come from God's neighborhood. Sure. So I brought someone with me who knows a lot about welcoming strangers. Remember how the Samaritan brought the man to an inn and asked the innkeeper to take care of him? I'd like to introduce you to the innkeeper. Welcome. Hi there. It's good to be with you. I heard that you're learning about who your neighbors are, and I bet you have learned a lot and have a good understanding of what it means to be a neighbor. Thank you, Mr. Innkeeper. It's been fun. We've learned a lot about different people and who our neighbors are. I bet you meet lots of different people at your job. What's it like? I love it. The inn is like a small hotel, but a homier feel. Every day, new people come to my inn, and I get to welcome them and help them feel at home. I take care of them, I hear their stories, and try to meet their needs. I love making people feel comfortable in a new place. What about the day when the Samaritan came in with the injured man? What did it feel like to help him? Were you scared you wouldn't be able to help the injured man? Or uncomfortable because the Samaritan was different from you? Maybe, at first. but. When you talk to someone and hear their story, you learn that we aren't so different after all. And as for not being able to help the man, maybe I couldn't help him perfectly, but I knew I could do my part, and that's all God asks of us, to do our best that we can, to listen, to love, and to be a good friend. You know, that is a good point. What else can you tell us about being a good neighbor? All kinds of different things. My guests, in the end, tell me new stories, share new foods, sing new songs, and make me laugh at their jokes. Each person who comes helps me see another part of God's creation. And I try to be as much help of a blessing to my guests as they are to me. It's like you're a theme verse for today. Each of us may please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. I try to be a blessing to my guests, and they are a blessing to me in return. And in that way, we build each other up and build up the neighborhood of God. I've never thought about it that way. When I help my neighbor, they're also helping me by teaching me new things and expanding the neighborhood of God. It's pretty cool how we all work together like that. It is pretty cool. Thank you both for coming today and sharing your stories with us. And thanks for bringing this guy. You're welcome. Glad I could share my stories with you. Have fun today learning more about love to welcome. How to welcome. Yes, you're welcome. And thank you for helping me think about what Jesus taught me. I learned a lot with your help. Hey, look at that. By helping each other, neighbors became friends. Bye. Bye. The theme for this session is building God's neighborhood. It's all about bringing everything together and putting it into action. The key verse for today is from Romans 15, 2. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. This session's activities are about action, showing us how we can be part of the building up of God's neighborhood. Let's pray. Dear God, what an amazing and diverse neighborhood you have created for us. 
full of different people to meet and new things to learn. Help us as we learn about the work you have for us in building our neighborhood and how we can help share your love with the world. Amen. Welcome back to the fifth and final day of Building God's Neighborhood. It's been such a joy to have you with us via video this week. We hope that you have learned about the love of God and who your neighbor is, near and far. Our lesson focus today, there are lots of ways to be a good neighbor, and when we work together, we can help build up the neighborhood of God for everyone. What are some surprises that have come up in your life? That you might have thought that you were going in your own direction and then went in another. Maybe somebody decided it for you. Let us read together Luke chapter 10, 33 through 37. I know we read it yesterday, but let's revisit it again today. But the Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put on his own, him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Probably a donkey, maybe a camel. Then the next day he took out two denarii. That was the about $200 or a wage. Give them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back I will pay, repay you whatever you spend. Which of these do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell in the arms of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go. Go and do likewise. During our skit today, what did the innkeeper say their job was? Do you remember? What was their favorite part? Was it making the beds for them? I don't think so. Was it greeting them and showing them hospitality? It sure was. Come, come into my home, my inn. Let me welcome you and hear about you. What was the innkeeper? How was the innkeeper a good neighbor to the man who needed help? He brought him in, right? <laughs> Welcomed him in, took care of him, listened to his story. Imagine you were an innkeeper or a hotel manager. How would you welcome people and make them feel at home in your hotel or your own town. There are many things that we can do to help welcome someone in. As simple as saying hello or smiling or shaking their hand. You may listen and hear the things that they like to do and perhaps suggest to them what your favorite thing in town is to do or to go to. That's one way. To welcome them. Let us read from Romans 15 2. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up of our neighborhood. What do you think it means to build up the neighborhood? How is it that we share God's love with the world? It might not just be the people who live along our streets. It 
might be people who live across the city or the state or even the world. All of those are our neighbor, we've learned. How did the Samaritan build God's neighborhood? By showing compassion on the person who was beaten by robbers? By doing what he could for him? And then taking him into the inn? And then the innkeeper. How did the innkeeper build up God's neighborhood? What about Amber? What did the Amber do to build God's neighborhood? What are some ways that you've learned to build God's neighborhood this week? That you can do, or your family can do, or we can do together as friends and family. Now, how can you share what you've learned this week with others? Sharing your story, sharing what you've learned, sharing the story of the Good Samaritan and the love of God and the compassion that the Samaritan showed the person who was beaten or the hospitality of the innkeeper and the excitement of Amber to build up God's neighborhood. To know that there is no partiality when it comes to the love of God. And you know, may you know the love of God so richly. And may you be one that helps build up God's neighborhood. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this great week of Vacation Bible School. Be with us today as we learn how to put everything we've learned into action. Action to build the neighborhood of God. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week, and we hope that you have learned about God's love, God's neighborhood, and how you can be a part of that. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our very last story time. Let's recap the week. On Monday, we talked about how much God loves us, and we learned a little bit more about Malawi and a nursery school that they have where they feed over 70 children every day. On Tuesday, we let our light shine with Maria in Colombia, who is using the skills that God gave her to help her neighbors. On Wednesday, we talked about not having fear with Frank and Angelique, who live in Rwanda. Yesterday, we talked about Hope Lutheran Church, right here in the United States, in Washington State, actually, and we talked about how God loves everyone. For our last story time, we were talking about the Central African Republic and Japan. Here are a couple of fun facts. More than 126 million people live in Japan, while 4.5 million people live in the Central African Republic. The official language of Japan is Japanese, while in the Central African Republic, French and Sangho are the official languages. Japan is sometimes known as the land of the rising sun because it is to the east of Asia. Rice and noodles are staple foods in Japan. Noodles are often slurped to help cool them down, and loud slurping is said to indicate that the food is delicious. More than 80 ethnic groups call the Central African Republic home. People have inhabited the area of the Central African Republic for nearly 10,000 years. I have a couple questions I want you to think about. Have you ever traveled far from home? What was your experience like? Were you nervous about being far away from home? Sometimes when we travel or leave the places we're used to, we might worry about where we will stay or what will happen. But God gives us neighbors who welcome us and help us. And God wants us to welcome the neighbors we meet, even the ones we meet far away from home. By welcoming each other, we can learn from each other and work together to help our world. 
One of the people our church has worked with is Paul, a student and leader in the Lutheran Evangelical Church in the Central African Republic. Paul's neighbors are farmers who work hard to grow their crops and raise animals. But one of the problems they have is that with so many people growing the same things they grow, they can't sell their crops for enough money to buy the things that they need. So Paul went to a school in Japan to learn how to help them. How far away is your school from your home? Well, Paul's school was all the way on the other side of the world from his home. That's where we're gonna bring out our map today. Right here is the Central African Republic and way over here is Japan. That's a long way to travel for school. Our church through the ELCA World Hunger helped pay for him to go to school in Japan. Paul spent three months living in Japan and he learned all kinds of things. He learned how to grow food that is healthy for people and didn't hurt the soil or the water. He also learned how to use greenhouses to grow vegetables like onions. What is a greenhouse, you might ask? A greenhouse is a building that plants can be grown in. By using greenhouses, farmers can grow crops during different times of the year. For Paul and his neighbors in the Central African Republic, using greenhouses means that they can grow onions at times when other farmers can't, so they can sell them for more money. Paul also learned how to get milk from goats. After spending time in Japan, Paul went back to the Central African Republic to share what he had learned with the people in his community. The things he learned will help his neighbors improve their farming and feed themselves and their families. But do you know what was the most important thing that Paul learned? He learned that he is an important person in his community and that he can help others just by being a leader. Paul might not have known it at first, but he had some pretty important neighbors in Japan, neighbors who would help him and share their wisdom with him. And because they welcomed him, Paul can welcome and help his neighbors in the Central African Republic. And that was possible in part because our church works with our neighbors around the world, knowing that we can learn from each other and serve God by loving each other. Like the Bible says, sometimes when we welcome neighbors, we entertain angels. Here are some questions for you to talk to your family and or neighbors about. How were the people in Japan angels to Paul? How might he have been an angel to them? What are some ways we can help our neighbors feel welcome in our community? I had so much fun this week sharing stories from Malawi, Colombia, Rwanda, the United States, the Central African Republic, and Japan. I hope you've had, you've had fun too and that these stories will help you show God's love to your neighbors and see God's light shining through both you and those around you. Have a great week. Bye.